Camera number 107 of 365 is the Nikon N2020, or sometimes it's called the F501. An autofocus camera, and it, the whole camera requires batteries to operate all its functions. So we'll go ahead and put some batteries into the camera straight away. The camera takes four AAA batteries that are put into a little cradle, and then uh, we just line up the two dots just here, sorry, I put my hands in the way, two dots there, and put the cradle back in. Mine's a little bit temperamental, so that's why I'm not going to take it out. And then we put the door, or the whole of the base really, back into the camera. The only other thing on the base of the camera is the tripod, which is obviously off center, uh, presumably, probably related to the batteries there. So with the batteries in we now have uh, a camera that will operate. So let's just run through uh, some of its functions. Let's uh, uh, take a lens off first of all and uh, we do that by pressing the lens release. Now being an autofocus camera uh, we would expect it to accept uh, most of the AF lenses that Nikkor produced, except G lenses uh, because uh, an aperture ring is required for us to uh, be able to use the camera in aperture priority mode or manual mode in, in fact as well. Uh, but it's right at home uh, with a manual uh, focus lens like this uh, Nikkor 50mm lens. Uh, the camera will operate and will meter exactly the same way but just without the uh, benefit of uh, autofocus. So looking on the, the front of the camera here, let's just uh, turn the camera on and we do that. You can notice here we have a lock button and then we can go to single release or continuous release. Let's just put it on single release. So uh, the top button, auto exposure lock, auto focus lock. And I believe this is the self timer button. And we get uh, a little red counting down. And the film is advanced to the next frame. Going to the other side, we uh, choose from uh, our focus modes, uh, single focus mode, continuous focus mode, or if we like, we can go into manual focus mode. Uh, this little port here oops, really shows us the uh, release, uh, remote release, which is a cable release, but electronic one. Just turn that back, put that back on. And so that's it as far as the front goes. So let's just put our lens back on. We'll choose our autofocus lens. The autofocus is uh, not super fast by today's standards, but uh, I found it to be more than adequate for the times and subjects that I choose. So it's not, uh, not a, a problem at all, in my particular opinion. So moving, keeping our attention on the left hand side here, we can choose our uh, film speed by lifting the collar and rotating to our desired ISO. And then we also have exposure compensation. We have to press this little lock button that allows us then to rotate. I believe it's plus two, minus two uh, exposure compensation button there and a little uh, light that actuates when uh, we take a photograph, which, which I can't seem to uh, do because I'm too close. And so of course we go to manual. There we go. So every time we take a photo, we get an LED. Going to the other side, as I mentioned, uh, putting it on A, and uh, we get aperture priority. So uh, when we look through the viewfinder, on the right-hand side, we have uh, our shutter speeds. Uh, no indication of our aperture and then we get a focus uh, to red uh, or plus or minus um, LEDs and the green one that confirms focus. So when we use an autofocus lens we wait for it to turn green and then we can take our photograph. If we have a manual lens like this 50mm lens uh, we still get the assistance of those lights uh, which is really helpful 
And that's a really good idea to be able to do that for both uh, autofocus lens or manual lenses. We get uh, the benefit of that uh, focus system. Moving the dial, uh, which is locked by this little button, so we have to press the lock. And then we have uh, three additional modes, pro all program modes. Uh, program dual, program and program high. They presumably will gravitate towards using particular shutter speeds or aperture combinations. Uh, but you can read the manual if you're that interested. But for the sake of this video, that's uh, what they do. If we want to go manual, we can just uh, simply unlock the dial and then choose our shutter speed, which again is uh, reflected in that uh, column of uh, shutter speeds. Our film rewind button, which we have to use in conjunction with this uh, film release. Oh, there we go. Uh, but we don't get automatic rewind of the film. It's a manual rewind. So those two buttons will only really release the ma uh, motor mechanism and then we wind our film. I really like that on a camera. I'm not a great fan of uh, winding the film on because often I'm using a film in more than one camera and although I can extract the film it's a real benefit to have a manual wind back. Uh, I really like that a lot. So as you can probably tell I like this camera very much. Uh, we have the option of uh, having some uh, audio sig uh, audible signals when uh, we choose a particular function. Uh, I think I've covered that and the dial single release, continuous release, and then our film uh, indication of uh, our shutter um, frame we're on. Okay, uh, just one other feature, again I like a lot, sorry to uh, ooze uh, on this particular camera, but a nice feature is that when the film is placed in the camera, with every time the film is advanced, we can see this uh, little dial rotate, showing that the film is on the canister. There's nothing worse than using a film <laughs> and finding you actually haven't uh, wound on it, the film properly. So again, that's uh, a really nice built-in feature of the camera. So, that's it. That has been camera number 107 of 365, the Nikon N2020.